Hey, do you know what I'm going to share today? I am a relative of Rockman from Press Start Living, and I am a third generation fortune teller in Hong Kong. I hope you will enjoy my stories today, and if you do, please subscribe to hear more upcoming stories like this one. If here is enough interest and new subscribers, I may use this channel to host live ghost stories for you all. So please support the channel by hitting HD like and subscribe buttons. Now to start my stories, I first want to tell you that these stories are all honest to truth experiences from the past 50 years since I was a young teenager. The ghosts, spirits and communications from beyond are all experiences I remember so vividly. It is as if they occurred just yesterday. For those who may have had some experience with talking with the dead or those who passed away, this may be something you relate to. If you have had similar experiences, please do share them in the comments below and we can explore this amazing aspect of life and the supernatural that affects our lives. First off, let's start with my dreams as a young teen. It's about my dreams and how I experience seeing people who have passed away from my family or celebrities I don't recognize. Let me start off with when I was 12 years old. That was the first time I played the spirit pen game with my classmates. Basically, we used a pen where several of us, maybe four or five girls, would all hold onto the pen together. We'd place a piece of paper on the table with yes and no written on it. And then we all asked the spirit questions through the pen. Like, when will I get married? Or what will be the last name of my husband? After playing with the spirit pen, I went home and my right hand kept uncontrollably drawing the figure of a ghost, a kind of shape, a ghost's appearance, with both hands continuously drawing forward. After finishing this drawing, I was so freaked out that I told my mum, what should I do? My hand keeps moving on its own like it's controlled by a ghost. So my mum took me to a temple. I only remember going there, but I don't remember what happened after that. It's like the ghost had somehow possessed my hand. Ever since then, I've often felt haunted. Honestly, I suspect the issue might be related to my energy levels, but whenever I feel overwhelmed, I pray to the Bodhisattva Guan Yin, and within three seconds I can snap out of it. Although these aren't very normal experiences, I've had many dreams where odd things happen. For instance, while I was studying in Japan, my grandfather passed away back in 1996. I still feel connected to these experiences through my dreams. So back then I had a boyfriend, right? I told my mom that it wouldn't be surprising if we got married when we returned to Hong Kong. Then one night I dreamt of my grandfather, standing at the foot of my bed right where my feet were. He was looking at me, turning his head, but he didn't say anything. In the dream I saw myself lying in bed with my boyfriend, and my grandpa was just turning his head toward me, as if to say this guy isn't your husband. Back in 1996, when I returned to Hong Kong, I called my mom from Japan. I hadn't visited my grandpa's grave in Tsiung Kwan O before, so I told my mom about my dream of seeing grandpa. He took me to see his grave, which was really beautiful and next to a tree. Then he walked away. I remember seeing a seascape near his grave in the dream. Grandpa was wearing the black clothes he used to wear before he passed, but there was some yellow mud on them, as if someone had fallen into mud and then got up. After returning to Hong Kong, around April during Qingming Festival, I went with my dad, mum and uncle for the first time to visit Grandpa's grave at the Tsiung Kwan O Chinese Permanent Cemetery. We chose a less busy time than Qingming itself. When we got there, I saw the exact tree from my dream. The tombstone was very clean, although it had been vandalised with red paint back in 1995, which my parents planned to clean up. I told my mom while in Japan that Grandpa's tombstone was very clean, and indeed, when we visited, it was spotless. I remember there was a sea view just like in my dream. So I walked around, and it was really far, but there was the sea. It was exactly as I had seen in my dream and when we visited his grave. I had quite an experience while I was living in Japan. I was staying in a dormitory and my room happened to be the last one on the floor. I didn't know initially, but apparently that room was rumored to be haunted. I had no idea when I moved in. Weird things started happening pretty quickly. Sometimes when I was sitting on a chair, it felt like someone poked me from behind. At first, I thought it might be an earthquake, common enough in Japan. So I would check the news with my remote to see if there had been any earthquakes reported, especially since it would happen around 7.30 in the evening, but there were no earthquakes. I could feel someone poking me and it felt so real. Then things got more bizarre. 
I kept losing things, like my earrings, and other random items would just disappear. One day I got so frustrated I actually yelled at whatever was causing the trouble, swearing in every language I knew, demanding my stuff back. It seemed to work because my things started reappearing. My room was tiny, just big enough for a small bed, a desk, and had a tiny bathroom. One night, I walked in on a ghostly figure in my dream. In the dream, a chubby guy opened the window and sat at the foot of my bed, turned on the TV, and just watched it, laughing. It was so vivid. He was right there under the desk lamp light. I eventually moved out and I thought I'd left all that behind, but I still had dreams about my old room. In one particular dream, I woke up in my bed to see a figure, like a magician on the ceiling, all dressed up, looking straight at me. That dream felt so real, I woke up terrified, thinking someone was actually on the ceiling. Even after I moved back to Hong Kong from Japan, I never thought about leaving that place while I was there. I guess I got used to the ghosts and they got used to me. We had become accustomed to each other. Even though I couldn't see them, I wasn't scared anymore. It felt like wherever I'd go, they'd follow. But it was okay. We lived in harmony in a way. So, after returning to Hong Kong around 1996, my life kind of went on as usual. But there was one thing that was always a constant. My grandfather's visits. You see, every year on his death anniversary or his birthday, he'd come visit me in my dreams. Almost like he was checking in or something. Fast forward to 2020 when my grandmother passed away. I didn't attend her funeral. Actually, I wasn't even there because I had just had a baby, and it was impossible for me to go. Since then, I hadn't visited her grave either. That's when things started getting a bit weird. I kept having these dreams about her, and they weren't just random dreams. They felt significant. One night, I had a really vivid dream where I saw my grandmother and my oldest brother, who appeared to be lying in a coffin, all covered up, just not moving. It was so real and frightening that I woke up in a panic. First thing in the morning, I called my brother to check on him, and guess what? He told me he was actually at our grandmother's funeral right then, which I had completely forgotten about. In the dream, it felt like she was telling me to come to the funeral. Despite that, I didn't go. Time passed, and life with a new baby was challenging. I kept seeing my grandmother in my dreams, and a streak of bad luck seemed to follow. Sickness, discomfort, just a series of unfortunate events. It got to the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore. About a year later, I talked to my parents, and we decided to visit her grave at the Chai Wan Catholic Cemetery. When we got there, we noticed something wrong. Her tombstone had a typo in it. That moment, it all clicked. Maybe all these dreams, and the bad luck were her way of trying to communicate with us, to tell us something was wrong. We immediately got the mistake corrected on the tombstone, and believe it or not, after that the dream stopped and things slowly began to improve. Reflecting on all this, it feels like those dreams were her way of reaching out, making sure we fix the error that perhaps was troubling her spirit. It's fascinating how these experiences tie back to some of the superstitions we hold dear in our culture. So my dad passed away on a Thursday afternoon. Then, a couple of days later on Saturday morning, super early around 7am, I had this intense dream. In the dream, I was back in our old apartment in Chai Wan, the kind with a small balcony. There I saw my dad sitting at a table on the balcony. I was just about to give him some breakfast when he suddenly starts complaining about how uncomfortable his clothes were. He seemed really upset, telling me he didn't like the clothes I picked for him and was really distressed about this jacket he was wearing. I woke up right after that dream, around 8 a.m., and I immediately called my younger brother to talk about getting some nicer clothes for dad because it felt like he was reaching out through my dream. I remembered I had his best suit at my place, so I decided to give that suit for him to wear. It turns out he was actually buried in that jacket he complained about in the dream, which he found really uncomfortable and hot. It was so vivid, he even made gestures about how stifling it was. After that, I insisted we switch his clothes. Now, after my mom passed away too, my son, who was very young, told me he saw my mom walking back and forth in her nursing home just like she used to. It seems like these dreams and visions might be a way our loved ones communicate with us, especially about things they're not happy with. For instance, right before my mom passed, she kept warning me about not leaving stuff near the fire escape, which could cause a real issue with fire safety. Sure enough, a few weeks after she passed, the firefighters came and fined us because of the clutter. 
These experiences really make you think about how our loved ones might still be looking out for us, even from beyond trying to nudge us to fix things they're worried about. So this one time I ended up in court and got fined around $3,000. But here's where things get interesting. My mom, she has this thing about catching dreams, especially about people who have passed away. And you see, when someone first passes, they often don't realize they're gone. It's like they're in this daze, wandering around, not fully awake, kind of like someone who hasn't had a good night's sleep. In the year after my mom passed, I would see her almost every week, almost every two or three days. It took about a year for her to start coming back to her usual self, like she was getting used to being a ghost. At first, her eyes weren't clear as if she wasn't fully conscious, but gradually, she became more and more present until she seemed totally normal again. Ghosts, it turns out, they need time to adapt. They slowly fade away and visit you less, but they always remember important dates like birthdays. They might show up a week or two before their birthday, or around traditional times like Qingming. My grandpa, who passed away back in 1996, still visits me in dreams. Just last year, I had this vivid dream where I was back in my old public housing apartment in Chaiwan where I lived as a teenager. In the dream, I saw my mom sleeping in her old room, and suddenly my grandpa appeared. He wasn't living with us when he was alive, but would come to visit often. In the dream, he was looking for something, asking if I had a suitcase or some toys. It turned out he wasn't just visiting, he was actually checking in on my mom, whom he called by her nickname. He told me he was going to be reincarnated and needed a suitcase for his journey. It's amazing, isn't it, how the other world seems to operate. After waking up from that dream, I realized just how magical this world can be. And ever since then, I haven't seen him. It's been over 20 years since he passed, but he still comes into my dreams, especially around his birthday in October and in December. As for my parents, after my dad passed away, I started seeing my mom more often. And sometimes in my dreams, I'd see both of them together in our old place in Chaiwan. They'd be standing there waving at me, which makes me think that those who have passed still find ways to connect with us. Honestly, from my teenage years up to now in my 50s, I've had countless dreams like these. It makes me wonder if there's a saying that goes, what you think about during the day, you'll dream of at night. But there's just too much to tell, more than I could ever fit into one video. I'll definitely share more stories with you later, but that's all for today's video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future stories. See you soon.